In this video, we're going to look at how to use a graphic EQ to boost your amp or your overall volume. Hey guys, this is Dr. McFarland and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to use a graphic EQ and use the volume feature on there to either boost the front end of the amp or have an overall volume boost for solos or certain parts that you want. And we're gonna also compare that to some other pedals that you would normally use for a boost and just see how they compare. So let's go ahead and drag in some, some amp models here. We're gonna start off with the clean amp. All right, great. So we have a basic amp and cab setup. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and add in our graphic EQ. And the parameters of this, we have a low volume and then a low mid, a mid, high mid, a high, and then we have a gain. So we're gonna use this gain right here to boost our volume okay and what's great about the graphic eq as well is you can shape that boost if you want to so if you want to add a little bit more high end or if you want to cut some lows or add some lows you can do that as well but for right now the most db we can get is six all right so i have this assigned to a switch down here so we can turn that on and off so here's the basic amp again <laughs> Here's a graphic EQ after the amp. So there's quite a bit of gain there. And what we want to make sure is the reason why I like to have my green bars three bars below zero is that it gives me plenty of headroom. So that way, if I do add a graphic EQ, See how I went into the yellow right there? If I were to have my signal closer to zero, like that, and put the graphic EQ in. Okay, now I'm getting into the red, and I don't want to do that. So that's the whole point of having plenty of headroom in your digital unit. Whether you're using a Headrush or a Helix or a Kemper or whatever else, this is a digital unit, so you need to treat it with proper gain staging, so that way you're not blowing out your uh, your output. And you can control the overall volume with your master knob over here. I understand that, but just for basic practices for digital units, you don't ever want your output signal to be clipping, ever, at all. Um, it's just not good practice. So we're gonna go ahead and name this rig Graphic EQ Boost, okay? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and add a reverb just so it's not so dry. Let's do a studio and we'll bring the mix down pretty well. All right, so let's crank the uh, graphic EQ again. So there's my before sound. All right, now, in a band context, you may not need 6 dB of, of gain boost. So let's crank it down to uh, 3, see what that does. So here's before. Okay, that's pretty good. We can also look at the output. Here's before. After. Okay, so we're just barely getting into the yellow right there. That's great. All right, let's see what happens if we take the same graphic EQ and we're going to boost the low end here. So here's before. OK, 
Okay, now you notice that is pushing the front end of the amp and it's overdriving it a little bit. So that's cool. And what you get with that is more compression and overall overdrive. Okay, now let's go ahead and crank up the amp all the way. Okay, this amp is not going to get, you know, tons of gain on it, but... Notice that the low end's getting a little wonky down there, so we can probably cut the low end a little bit. And maybe you want to raise the upper mids. So even without using a normal gain pedal, we can get some gain from the amp just by pushing it with the graphic EQ. All right, now let's go ahead and change the amplifier. Let's do a Princeton reverb, okay? So this is gonna be a little more overdriven. Okay, so that's our starting point. good sound I like that a lot um, all right that was a good example let's do another amp and let's find one let's do an AC 30 and we're gonna have this one just in the middle of the road here <laughs> Okay, so you can hear with a few different examples there that the graphic EQ definitely boosts the front end of the amp really well. And obviously if you put it after the amp, it's gonna give you a, a volume boost. Let's, uh, let's crank up the amp here. So what I'm gonna do is, if it's after the amp, I'm not gonna boost it as much, because we don't need that much volume boost. But before the amp, you can definitely stand to crank it a little bit more, because all you're doing when you're pushing the front end of an amp is you're just overdriving it and making it more compressed anyway. So you're allowed to have a lot more boost before the amp. <laughs> Let's add some high end here. We can kind of treat this as like a treble booster just by boosting the you know upper frequencies here. Because you 
you're not going to be adding tons of high end to the overall sound because those upper frequencies are going to end up being compressed anyway. So that's a great way to use the graphic EQ. <laughs> Let's do the same thing with a well-known tone beast. Let's do a um, M2 lead from Meza Boogie. And we're going to end up going with a... Uh, let's do a 30-watt cab. Okay. Here we go. Graphic EQ off. <laughs> All right, very scoopy sounding. Uh, let's turn the drive down a little bit. We don't need all that drive. We can turn the master up a little bit. Maybe turn the presence down. And let's see what we got. Turn the bright off. <laughs> All right, so let's turn on the graphic EQ. Here's the before. After. All right, so let's see what we can get away with here. Let's really boost the high end. All right, so with an already overdriven amp, Pushing more frequencies into the front end is not necessarily going to yield a very uh, top frequency result, um, just because you're over compressing everything anyway. So, all right, let's try the same thing with the mid range. Let's boost the mids. This is going to be around 800 hertz. All right, let's put it after the amp. Now we're going to lower the gain a little bit. So here's before, here's after. All right, so you definitely get a nice volume boost with it after the amp. Let's make it not so drastic here. All right, here we go. Before. After. All right, very cool. Let's compare this real fast to the white boost. And what this has is a gain, treble, bass, and level. So let's turn the gain all the way down and see what boosting the level does. All right, so here's the bass tone. Here's the white boost. So I think my camera is, is, is limiting the sound a little bit because it's definitely getting a lot louder. So you can accomplish the same kind of thing with the white boost, just with the gain all the way down. We can turn up the, the treble a little bit, maybe bring down the bass. Let's put this before the amplifier and we can stand to bring up the level now before so the same volume boost that we had after the amp is barely noticeable when it's before the amp so let's go ahead and crank it up and see what happens here's before All right, so it's really not doing a whole lot of nothing. 
Um. It is adding gain because when I bring the drive down on the amp, the white boost brings it right back up to where the gain was before. <laughs> That is pretty fun. And let's try one more. Let's do the green JRC. And I usually have the drive down and the level all the way up and you can adjust the tone to taste. So here's the bass amp here. The green JRC. All right, now this one's gonna have a lot more mid-range uh, spike. So we can stand to probably bring down the level just a little bit. But you hear how scoop that sound is compared to this. Okay, let's see if we move the graphic EQ before, if that does something similar. So we got the mids cranked on this, maybe some upper mids. Let's see what happens here. All right, so the graphic EQ is now acting pretty much like a tube screamer, as in it's boosting the mid-range frequencies, which is what a tube screamer does. And we're also rolling off some of that low end, which is what the tube screamer does as well. So if you don't want to use a tube screamer all the time, but you do want to use a graphic EQ, you can totally do that and get the same kind of effect going on. So let's uh, compare that one more time. Here's without graphic EQ and green JRC. All right, cool. I um, hope that has helped some of you guys. I've seen a few questions here lately about boosts and how to boost and where to place your boost and all that different stuff. So that's how I would boost before or after the amplifier uh, using a graphic EQ. We've given a few other examples with the white boost and the green JRC. Feel free to subscribe down below if you have not done so already. And be sure to click the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I release new content. Do be sure to check out the website, drmcfarlandstudios.com. And there you can sign up for a monthly or a yearly plan where you can access courses about music, about gear, and about recording. So I am Dr. McFarland. I will see you in the next video. Keep rocking.